Okay, um, hello everybody, and uh, thank you for watching this. So, um, if you're watching this right now, um, chances are you're participating in one of our Instructables design competitions. So today we're going to go ahead and go over um, some of the content that we want to see in your Instructable and also just kind of a general overview of what is Instructables and why do we think it's a great community for you to be a part of. So um, think of Instructables, this kind of definition right here is actually perfect. So it is a community for people who like to make things. So, um, you know, make things can be kind of uh, general. So it's divided up into a bunch of different categories and you can use here as a fun little Halloween category for the current time. Um, but let's go ahead and scroll down and, and check out some of the things that you can expect to find on Instructables and what the sort of format of these projects are. So it's divided up into a bunch of uh, categories. Uh, there's one for circuits. There's one uh, general one they just kind of call workshop. One for different crafts. Uh, you can even find uh, recipes for cooking. Uh, living, so things that, you know, kind of affect your daily life, your home, here's a nice plant. Uh, outside, um, you know, we previously ran a competition on camping products, so again, that would kind of fit into this category. And then there's even some resources uh, for teachers to do with your students. So this is, again, just like a, a general kind of place where you can go and if you're interested in circuits, you can go click on here and say, well, you know, right now I'm doing an Arduino project. Well, here's all of these super cool projects that people have done with Arduinos. And the cool thing about Instructables, and it's kind of in the name, is there's going to be a bit of, of instruction, you know, involved with your projects. Let's go ahead and let's just choose this one here. Now, cool. So he's got a cool little YouTube video linked. And uh, so an Instructables is essentially going to teach you how you can also build this, uh, this project here. So if we scroll down, you can see this project's pretty big. It's got a lot of steps, but it's gonna show you exactly how they were able to bring it to life. So every Instructable should have somewhat of a teaching moment in it. And it's also um, very good when you have physical models or in our case, some prototypes of your, your product. So let's go ahead and navigate to our contest and start start talking about more of what we are expecting out of you uh, when you submit a project. So if you don't have our, our either back to school or if you're watching this for the 3D printed design challenge as well, from the homepage, you can just go ahead and click on contest. Now Instructables hosts a number of contests at the same time. And, and of course we encourage you um, to enter as many as you like. So let's go ahead and scroll through here. You can even see they have some stats. They've ran over a thousand contests. They've had over 17,000 winners. Um, so it's a really, really fun thing. So you can just scroll through here and kind of check out um, different things that you might be interested, different design challenges and contests to enter. Um, and we find two of ours here. So we're going to focus on this back to school one right now. So let's go ahead and click on this and check out um, our homepage. Make sure that you've you haven't missed anything and then show you where you can get some resources. And then let's talk about some good example projects. So if we scroll down here, um, of course, uh, you know, you probably already found our workshop schedules, um, our requirements, just a quick little refresher. Um, this one is very important right here. Of course, you have to be a, a current student at a high school, college, or university in the U.S., you must also use Fusion 360. Um, our due date is October 18th by 11.59, and all of your entries are going to have a passcode. Um, now, you can get those during your final design review, um, and you can get those from uh, the Autodesk Student Ambassadors on our Discord server. So we encourage you, if you're watching this and you haven't joined yet, go ahead and join our Discord, um, especially towards the end of this project. Uh, we are available to help you guys have success. So we can go over your Instructable, we can go over your project, help you out with any Fusion 360 technical help. Um, and that's exactly what we're here to do. So definitely take advantage of that. Now we'll, we'll go ahead and run back to this in a second, but if we scroll down you can see there's already even some entries into this uh, contest and then you can scroll down and check out some of the prizes. So 
Again, if you haven't spent a lot of time on this homepage, go ahead and, and just scroll around a little bit and make sure that you haven't missed anything. And there is also uh, a little reminder, this will update um, every day so you can uh, know how much time you have left. Now, if you uh, want to read a little bit more into the official rules, you also learn a little bit more about the judging process and kind of what you'll be judged on. Go ahead and click on this official rules button and you can read through that document that pops up here. Now, we want to talk a little bit more, uh, if you're brand new with Instructables, where do I even start? First things first, go ahead and make an account. When you have made an account, it'll pop up in this top right corner and you have um, some options here. Make an account, it's completely free and super, super easy. After that, uh, we have a couple guides here to help you out. So if you have never uh, posted an instructable, how do I do that? Well, there's a complete guide here. So if we go ahead and open this up, what do we see? Well, it's gonna give you a four part kind of lesson series of, you know, um, what is an instructable? How should I document my project? What are some best practices? How do I write it? And how do I publish it? So this guide is really, really good. Um, so I highly recommend it. If you've never written instructable, you start here. And also we have some uh, examples of designs that have uh, won our competitions in the past. We open up this link. Now this is a collection of projects that we think are really, really strong. Um, they showcase great Fusion 360 skills, but also just great product design skills um, in general. So let's go ahead and um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and click on one of my past projects here and let's check out some of the content and, and what our goal is from this. Now again, if you're new to Instructables, I've already published this one, so I'm going to have a little admin pop up here of things that I can go ahead and modify. Now, if you're just viewing this, if you're or if you're viewing someone else's project, you're not going to have this little admin bar here. So for now, you can go ahead and disregard that. So let's talk about um, the steps and the format and, and what we're expecting to see from you. So the main takeaway is that we want you to tell us a story of how and why you brought your product to life. For example, this project was part of our organizers competitions. So I wanted to solve a product. Uh, I wanted to solve a problem that my desk tends to get kind of messy. Um, I'm always having to change it around for different, you know, tasks and different orientations. And I just needed something that was easy to stay organized. So where did I go? First things first, we're going to start with this. So this is going to be what we're going to kind of reference as your hero shots. This is going to be your best rendering, your best visual behind your product. And think of this, you know, like the beginning of a book. You want to hook us in with this. You want us to think, want to learn more about your product from this image. So sometimes it can be kind of hard to just choose one image, um, but just find one that you really, really like and something that somebody can see and say, wow, you know, I really want to learn a little bit more about that. So let me go ahead and read their instructable. Now I have a bit of kind of a, a problem statement here um, that, that, you know, you guys can take a second to read through. Um, and just kind of what, what the viewer can expect. So this is going to take you through my process of designing that. So this instructable, the teaching moment is meant to show them how, you know, I, as an industrial designer, brought this product to life from just an idea to getting stuff on paper, to getting stuff in CAD, to prototyping, etc. Um, there is also a little uh, stop for supplies. So of course, uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 is required. I also used a couple other um, apps here, but these are not necessary by any means. So let's jump into step one, which is kind of where we start with any new product idea, which is market research. So market research is essentially saying, hey, you know, there's lots of products that are already on the market and I'm gonna use this desk project as, as an example. I'm sure all of us have some sort of a desk or a table that we like to do our homework on. Um, and there are so many different products on the market from off the shelf stuff to custom builds. Um, and so when I'm thinking about my project here, I'm thinking, okay, where do those fall short and where can I capitalize on that? In, 
This also does kind of come down to the person, right? The desk that I've designed might work really well for students um, or creative professionals, but for a, you know, a strictly business professional, maybe it's not the best. So we also do want to kind of identify a target market. Who is my product uh, designed for? So always keep that in the back of your head. Um, and after we kind of do some market research, familiarize ourselves with, you know, what's, what's out on the market. Um, I tend to uh, kind of pull some inspiration and we're referencing CMF here. Now that stands for color, material, and finish. Um, this is something that I like to do for every project. And it's again, just something to kind of keep in the back of my mind while I'm designing, maybe just even something like this, some images that I like of completely, you know, uh, products that are not even, even in the same category, uh, but just that I like the look and the feel and this is some things that I can integrate into my product design as well. So take some inspiration for your product and, um, you know, in your final, you should be able to kind of see how you've integrated some of it. Now, the next thing we're going to go to is some sketching. So, of course, we highly, highly, highly recommend that before you even get into CAD, you start on paper. Now we're seeing um, digital sketches with Autodesk Sketchbook. Um, I, I, you know, you don't have to have a fancy drawing tablet or anything. Um, all you need is a piece of paper and a pen. Um, you know, also uh, something kind of important here is, you know, don't worry about the quality of your sketches. You know, we're not um, artists by any means. Um, it took me a while even just to get to something, you know, of, of this standard. And I still have a long, long road ahead of me um, to learn in sketching. So. Um, However you, you know, get your ideas out of your mind and on paper is up to you and never be self-conscious of how your sketches look. Another huge, huge pro tip as far as professionalism goes, um, use a scanning app like Adobe Scan or there's a number of other ones on the market or if you have an iPhone, you can do it with your notes app. Um, scan your sketches into uh, image files and they will come out really, really clean and they will actually, you know, somewhat look like digital sketches. I highly recommend that versus just taking a picture of, you know, your piece of paper on your desk. It looks much more professional if you scan them. So that's, that's just a little kind of pro tip around here. So on the ideation sketches, again, this is just kind of getting your initial ideas out of your brain and seeing the direction that you want to pursue. All right. Again, so after that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of, of different ideas and then I'm going to go ahead and jump into CAD. And of course, we're in Fusion 360. Another tip uh, for you guys here, we're looking at some clean visuals. Now, these aren't renders. These are just taken directly out of our design workspace. Um, but we're not seeing any of our tools. You know, it's a very clean and crisp image. So a pro tip, if you are inside of Fusion 360 and you open up file in the top left of your screen, uh, there will be an option somewhere towards the bottom that says capture. Now you can capture a clean image of your workspace and just go ahead and export it to your file explorer. And this is the best way that you can get visuals out of Fusion 360 without taking renderings. Now we're seeing step four, five, six, and somewhat into seven here. This is all about modeling. So now it's time for you to show off your Fusion 360 process of how you actually modeled um, all of the parts of your, your project here. So I started out with the desktop. I'll give a little bit of a description below. Um, I also kind of touch on how I you know, thought this would be manufactured. After that, I go ahead and go into modeling uh, the legs of the desk and again, everything that's kind of involved with that. Go into modeling the accessories. Now, it's really important to note, you know, I'm not showing every single sketch that I did. I'm not showing, you know, um, these projects, you know, can go in a direction that we don't necessarily want them to go. And that's having, you know, for my design, I could, I could make this, I could, you know, 30 to 50 steps and I could show people every little process and every little sketch that I did. We just want you to give a basic overview, um, and essentially give, you know, the average Fusion 360 user can look at this and say, okay, I have an idea of how I could model that as well. So I go into modeling, you know, some of the accessories 
for the desk. And then lastly, I want to show the final assembly. Now we're kind of getting into some renderings. After that, um, we're going we're gonna to come back to those renderings in a second. Um, prototyping, and in this case, proof of concept. So I needed a proof of concept for this rail system. Uh, this is what these accessories kind of fit into. You can see it right here. I needed to prove that that worked. So I went ahead and 3D printed and uh, tested out my concept at scale. And it worked great. Um, of course, you don't have to have access to a 3D printer or any sort of fancy manufacturing. We encourage all of you to prototype at home and you can do this extremely cheaply with materials that you have just laying around the house. That could be paper, an old cereal box, just some cardboard you have from some old boxes and some tape and some hot glue. Um, you know, show that you've kind of thought about how, uh, you know, your user might interact with your product um, and show us that you are thinking of, of this as, as a real world object. And those are all going to start with a prototype. So we encourage you, again, you don't have to have any sort of fancy 3D printers. Prototyping can be done extremely cheaply. Now, if you have questions or, or this is your first one that you're building, you don't really know where to start, you can reach out to us and we can help with that. Step nine, we're going to go ahead and, and jump into some rendering. So we do want to see some good renders of your project. Um, we will also have a, uh, a video linked for you guys very soon on uh, rendering and essentially all the basics of the render space to kind of get you started. Uh, so we want to see and get a real world feel for your project here. Now, um, this is a GIF that I created on the left here. I did this with Photoshop, uh, but all of these, these models that you're seeing here, these are all, all physical models that I imported into Fusion 360. So we definitely want to see you guys um, import a lot of these models. I used uh, GrabCAD to get. Now GrabCAD is just an open source 3D CAD model library that you can get context for your renderings. For example, I'm showing my kind of top three uses that I imagined I would use this desk for. Um, again, if you need help on your renderings or you just want some feedback, you can go ahead and reach out to us and we will uh, more than happy to help with that. After that, I kind of touch on some of the details again, uh, some of the closer up details that you're not going to see from these, you know, renders that I'm showing the entire desk here. Um, this project or this step rather can kind of change based on your project and the specific needs. Um, but basically, if you have a project and you've just shown us, you know, the overall kind of aesthetic and the overall part here, um, some of these details that you've spent some time designing can get lost. So make sure you take a little bit of extra time and, and show us those. Now I have a little extra step here, you know, just some extras that I wanted to show and a bit of a conclusion. So one thing that I always, you know, was considering about this project is that I wanted to be able for it to pack really flat and be able to ship easily. So, you know, I created a little cardboard box in Fusion and said that, hey, you know, I've also thought about shipping this, this project. Um, and this desk packed, you know, packs very, very flat. So that's just another little kind of extra, um, some extra points that you might get with the judges. And just a little conclusion at the end, you know, just kind of what I thought about the project. You know, we really, really value uh, your feedback on these design competitions, and it's your feedback um, that allows us to improve these. So um, whether you want to put it here or submit it anonymously, um, we have resources for you to do so. All right, so that is a basic kind of overview of what we're looking to see from you. Um, now, of course, this isn't the only project that you can reference. We have tons of really good projects here. Um, you know, for example, we really love this one from Ryan uh, that he submitted for, for our last project. So take a look at these and, you know, kind of get some inspiration, um, see what everybody's doing. And that's generally the content uh, that we want to see from you. Now, if you have any questions about any of this, where you can get help, is my Instructable good enough? Can I just have some feedback on it? You can reach out to us, the Autodesk Student Ambassadors, from our Discord server. Um, now, uh, if you aren't on the Discord, again, we really highly um, encourage you to join. 
um, and it should also be linked from our home page right here you can just click this little discord uh, button here and if you haven't created an account we recommend that you create an account and download the app and it will go ahead and bring you uh, here which is going to be our discord server now you can reach out to Autodesk student ambassadors um, all the time um, you know virtually 24 hours around the clock to get some feedback and we really highly encourage you guys to do so okay so why don't we go ahead and um, just kind of talk about that so we've shown you a good instructable you know what the website is now but where do I actually start well of course start here on how to write instructable but let's kind of you know go through what that's going to show you from your icon here let, let's let's click around a little bit so if we go to our profile this is going to be kind of your home and you can see I've posted a few instructables now um, and you can click on to each of these you can see you know I've won a contest before and, and done all that but if I want to go ahead and create a new one I'm gonna go ahead and click here and let's just go ahead and click on new instructable and let's go through um, there is a little uh, thing that popped up here instructable is actually just launched a new editor um, so this might look a little bit different you can also go back to the old editor if that's what you're more comfortable with but it's super super intuitive um, you get to add images add steps supplies step one and then at the bottom here you just click on this add new step button and you can add as many as you need um, super easy again you just drag and drop images upload them from your computer and you can write a little description so it's really, really, really intuitive. Um, so when you are ready to uh, add this to our contest, now I'm probably going to have to um, fill out a couple things here before it's gonna let me go on to this next step. Yes, okay. So let's go ahead and create, um, let's just call this example one. Let's throw this in circuits and let's say it's an Arduino. Now it's going to ask us for, I think at minimum, we're going to have to have a, uh, a cover image. So let's go ahead and just grab one really quick. Um, let's see, what are we looking at my logo here? Sure, let's just throw one of these in there and this will work. Um, okay, so we have somewhat of a cover image and I think it's just going to also add us, we have to have text in our introduction and test text in our first step. So let's say intro and step one. And now we can go ahead and of course, you know, you, you would completely fill this out, but just for an example, so we can go our next step, we can go ahead and click on publish. Now, what are we looking at here? Okay, well, it's gonna ask, you know, for some keywords, you know, that you could add. This helps people um, when they're searching on Instructables that can find your project and you can, you know, get a little example. Now, if you scroll down just a little bit, it's gonna ask for a contest entry. So, if you're in here and you decide, hey, oh, well, I'm entering this one into the back to school design competition, you can click on this once. It's gonna go ahead and give you um, a little bit uh, more info here just a reminder of you know this is the one that you want to enter here's the full contest info if we go ahead and click on yes i'd like to enter it is also going to ask you for a passcode at the bottom here now your passcode will be given to you again after your final design review um, so you can get your final design review by direct messaging um, the student ambassadors. I encourage you um, on our Discord server, reach out to myself. I can be found on there at Jake Ramirez and Serena on the Cerner. I, be I believe her um, name on there is just at Serena. You can go ahead and just DM either of us. We'll take a look at your project, give you some feedback, and then give you your code to enter. And it's also going to ask you to verify your country, of course. Um, this uh, competition is only open to people in the United States currently. After that, you can go ahead and just click on publish now. Um, now there is also kind of a secondary verification process that the Instructable team will go through. Um, after they, uh, you know, take a quick look at your project, make sure that it follows all the guidelines and make sure that there's nothing inappropriate, you know, for example, in it. Um, typically in about one to three days, you'll go ahead and see it on uh, the contest homepage. So don't worry if you click publish and you don't see it here right away. It has to get uh, checked over a little bit more, um, but then you'll see it here. And um, awesome. 
Okay. Thank you, everybody. So that is kind of your, you know, uh, how do I, how do I instructable? Um, and again, as you are creating your instructable, as you're getting your drafts together, um, we are here to help. We're here to give, you know, constructive feedback on all of your projects. So reach out to us on Discord and we are more than happy to help. Thank you for uh, coming to this and watching. And we hope you have success in this challenge.